visibility, repeatability, and audibility. Those are three of the benefits that you will realize with the use of Serena's release management solution. The solution is comprised of two primary components, and those components are the control and the release automation. And together, they provide planning, visibility, and automation in order to get those three benefits we saw on the previous slide. You'll see on this picture that I'm displaying right now that we can take source from many different repositories, Serena's repositories being the obvious selections here, but we can also reach out to other source code repositories such as Subversion or TFS and be able to help you automate and deliver your releases faster so that you can meet the needs of your business. Drilling in a little bit more on those two components of the release management solution, release control contains pre-built workflows that manage your release process. So you have things such as approvals and assignments, the steps in order to deploy your applications, because likely when you do a release, you have multiple applications or multiple components within an application that need to be coordinated together in order to successfully get the release into production. So the release control aspect of our solution provides the workflows necessary in order to manage that. It also provides visibility for you from the perspective that you now have the ability to report against what is going on, what is the current status. So as people that are maybe not hands-on within the release process, but maybe management, executive level management need access in order to view status of things. They no longer have to pick up the phone or send an email to get status. They can simply log in and check the reports that are available. Also, as we navigate through today, we'll notice that at each point in the process, regardless whether we're looking at a release package that's moving through the life cycle of all of our different stages, or we're looking at an individual deployment task, we can easily navigate to the other components that are related, therefore giving us a 360 degree view of what's going on. The release control processes are built on a platform called SBM, and the platform has been around for many years, and you'll notice that the processes will be repeatable each time, which in essence, as we know in nature, if it's repeatable, then we can deliver faster. Things that are repeatable and we can then start to gain an expectation of what's going to happen rather than always just uh, rolling the dice, we will be able to deliver faster and again meet the needs of the business. The other component of our release management solution is release automation. Release automation is responsible for taking your application artifacts and installing them into your testing and production environments. As you'll see, the release automation provides easy access to the versions deployed in each environment. If the deployments were successful, you are able to leverage the same process for every environment out to production, out to and including production. Therefore, you have practiced that release process several times prior to getting to production and that should ensure that you have a large reduction in the number of errors once you get out to production. Both of these components allow you to map and enforce your process. So one of the keys that Serena follows here is that we understand your process first, and then we implement the tool around your process. So it's not a matter of having to understand how Serena does release management and then change your business in order to adapt. We are able to provide you with a set of workflows to begin with, but then the set of work workflows that we're providing you are easily configurable in order to map with your process. And if the names are different, certainly you can change the names. If there are hundreds more steps in your release process, then we can certainly add in those steps in order to make it fit your business. So let's take a look at how we can manage releases within Serena's release automation or release management solution. I'm going to start here. This is a view of a release or a sample set of reports that you could have in a release management type dashboard. You'll notice that there's a collection of metrics here, whether it be graphical reports or listing reports. These are all pulled out of the release control interface of release management. 
And these reports also provide some drill down capabilities. So as a manager or somebody involved with the release management process, I have the capability in order to drill into these reports and take a look at the data behind them. Therefore, giving me an, you know, the, the detailed level of information that I need or the high level information that I need. Now, this is all going to be permission based as well. So depending upon what my permissions are, that will drive what I'm able to see. So if I'm exterior to the release process, I may be able to just get a general sense of what's going on. Whereas if I'm an actual release engineer, I might have more access to the data that's being captured within the system. We're going to be taking a look at more details of that release package here coming up shortly. Uh, so we won't drill in any further. I just want to give you a sampling of some of the types of reports that we can create out of the system. And another example is going to be over here from a calendaring perspective. So as we come out and we start to define release trains, which is kind of the top level hierarchy of our release management solution, one of the top level workflows is referred to as a release train. And the release train is mostly a scheduling mechanism to allow you to define out what your stages are that you're going to go through from a release perspective, and what are the time frames that you're going to be going through those different stages, providing visibility to anyone who has access to the system as to what's going on. And then once we have that information scheduled, you'll see that we can then display that information graphically in a Gantt chart type view down here, as well as in a regular calendar view to understand when those releases will be going um, into those different phases. These reports also provide additional drill down information. So you can see I can expand this out and see what's going on on that day there, or drill into the specific release train that we have scheduled here for um, um, on the Gantt chart view. The types of releases that you will be performing are also configurable. So out of the box, we provide you with three different categories that are pretty common, a normal release, an emergency release, um, excuse me, a, a major and a minor and an emergency type release. And depending upon the type of release, that will dictate what stages your release will move through. So we'll notice as we progress through the system here that depending upon the type of release that we're creating, we are able to adjust the information that is presented and captured based upon that data. And then that way, everything is tracked appropriately and you can uh, be able to uh, drive the information necessary from your users. In addition to the release train, and since that's more of just a scheduling capability, then there's the next level down that we'll talk about, which is the release package which is kind of the meat of it where everything happens. A release package is going to contain your process that includes all of the different stages that you will progress through from a release standpoint, and it will contain all of the approvals that may be necessary for that particular package. A package is also going to comprise one or more units of work. So it could be that you have maybe some information from uh, uh, subversion that happens to be database scripts. You might have uh, some uh, packages from your mainframe system that's controlled under ChangeMan. You might have some application packages from your development team from Dimensions CM. We are able to collect all of those units of work into a single release package and then coordinate the activities of when those things have to be deployed. You can also relate these release packages up to your release train so that you can have an understanding of when they're going to be delivered and the time frames that you set out from a release train standpoint. So depending upon the level of detail that you want to be able to use the system, uh, you have the option to define out the release trains. If that's something that's not necessarily done in your organization, you can certainly just use the release package level. What we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and create a release package, and we'll step this through a couple steps giving you an idea of the information that we can capture. Keep in mind that this is what we provide out of the box as far as information to capture. It is very easy in order to add additional fields if there's data that you need to capture in addition to what's provided out of the box. And there is not additional coding that's necessary in order to add that configuration into the system. It's all done in a graphical environment. All right, so let's create a new package here, and we'll just do this release package three. 
the default package type that I have selected in here is a major type package, and we have that defined that it will go through an integration test, a unit accept or a user acceptance test, and a production environment. Notice that when I change this dropdown, if we happen to select that it's a minor release, that we have it defined that it no longer has to go through that integration test environment. It just goes through, your, through our user acceptance and production. So again, depending upon the type of release that you have, you can drive the process flow that it's going to move through the stages as well as the data that's collected. Now, in order to allow us to get that 360 degree view of everything that's captured in this particular release package, we want to have an understanding of the change requests that are going to go into that package. This ability to go and relate change requests is available here. Now, out of the box, we have this hooked up to go and relate to other change requests that may be captured here within our SBM platform in our defect and issue tracking system, so we can certainly hook up to that. You could also hook up if you were changing or tracking those change requests in Dimension CM. But also keep in mind, we could also plug this into other systems. So if you were using JIRA, for example, we would be able to relate those tickets so that we have that visibility as to the change requests that are a part of this package. As we move down, we're going to be taking a look at this query box here where it's asking for a Dimension CM deployment unit project. So what this is referring to is what is the location in your source code repository that we're going to be accessing information uh, or accessing a, a baseline of data, if you will, uh, in order to be able to deploy. So if you're using Dimension CM, you've likely created a stream in order to do the development for this release package. And we would then select the stream that that development occurred here. The next phase that we'll do is we'll end up selecting a baseline that exists in that stream. So that's why we have to define this first level here so we can go define a baseline from that stream that is going to be part of this package. Finally, you'll see that we have a ChangeMan VMF. This is the mainframe change management system that Serena offers. And we can go and select an application over in ChangeMan that we're going to relate to this particular release package. And what this will do is it'll allow us to filter down to the packages for this particular application that we then want to deploy out. Once we have all of the details captured and we fill in all of the required information, our release package will be created and then we can go take a look at it and look at the details here and then add some additional information. So. It has entered the life cycle now. We are starting to capture some additional information. You'll notice that we're in the status of development. This is essentially developing the release package. And from here, what we can see is everything that we've selected so far. So we have visibility into the, the change man streams that we're relating, the, uh, um, excuse me, the change man applications, the dimension CM streams that we're relating. If we had added the development change request, we'd see what we're touching from that perspective. And the specific development change request could then become selected on this next tab over. From a scheduling perspective, this is just reiterating the dates that we have identified. We're not going through the integration test date or testing uh, stage, so that's not going to be populated for us here. The next phase for us from a release manager standpoint is to, to come in and identify what are those units of work that we're actually going to use from a deployment standpoint. So by clicking on adding deploy units, we have two sections on here, as we might expect from a Dimension CM and a change man perspective. And so we can go get baselines from dimensions. And so that's going and accessing that stream that we just selected in the previous screen and giving us a listing of those specific baselines. And then we'll see the change band packages that are available based upon the application that we chose on the previous screen as well. So once we add those, the screen will refresh, and then we'll see that uh, those are now associated with our release package. So we're just building up the information that's going to be part of this package. Um, at, at this point, I'll take a break while this is processing and just talk a little bit about different methods in order to do your deployments. 
So from here, what we're kind of looking at is from the release manager doing a pull. The developers are going out and doing their their development and they're building their artifacts if that's you know part of the process if they are creating you know some sort of um, end executable artifact for us to deploy. And then from a release manager perspective, we're pulling that information in. The system can also be configured in order to provide a push mechanism. So it could be that the developers fill out a request uh, that will essentially be assigned then to the release manager indicating that they have a release candidate in order to deploy out. So it doesn't matter which type of environment your organization uses, whether it's a pull or push method, we can configure the workflows in order to facilitate both situations. All right, so we have our two deploy units associated with our package now. The next step that we would do is we'd go through and we would define the deployment tasks necessary for each of the environments that we're going to progress through. So what, how we do this is we click on Create Task. We're given a form, and, and this is pretty much the same. So you just select the option that you need to go and configure. And then from the drop-down list, we'll see a list of options available to us here. For instance, if we're going to go and take that dimensions stream, uh, the baseline in that stream, and we're going to deploy that. We'll go ahead and give that task a name, make a selection of our baseline there. This is also going out to query dimensions and bring back our life, uh, life cycle stages. We're going to choose where we're going to deploy that. And then as a part of the dimensions configuration, there's one or more areas defined for that particular lifecycle stage. So we'll make a selection there. Define who the release engineer that's going to go do the work. And then click OK, and that'll be added to our list. Now, by default, when we go to create these tasks, the, uh, the sequencing is set at zero. As I add additional tasks, I can change the sequence number to increase them to be the appropriate order that's going to be necessary for the deployment. So for instance, if we need to deploy our dimensions application first and then go and deploy the change man package, when we create our subsequent task to do the change man deployment, we will change the sequence number to be one. So it will happen serially after the first step is completed. So as we select the deployment sites as defined over in ChangeMan, then we are filtered for the deployment areas and we'll associate our engineer and save that task. Tasks can occur in parallel as well. So if you have tasks that need to occur at the same time, they can be identified with the same sequence number and then they will happen in parallel. You might have also seen that there was the ability to add in manual tasks. There may be approvals or verifications, validations of environments that need to occur. You can also define those in the system. And what will happen then is as soon as we get approval for this release package to move forward, then the first task will initiate. Once that task is complete, Information will be sent from dimensions back to the release control system. It will then execute the next step automatically. So it's not a matter of having to all sit on a phone call on release weekend waiting for somebody to get to your line on the Excel spreadsheet in order to tell you to go execute your task. The system is then managing that quote unquote spreadsheet, if you will, and automating the assignment of those tasks out. So if we have a manual task, and say it happened right after the dimensions deployment, for instance, what would happen is when that manual task would come up, an email would be sent out to that person assigned to the task. They would receive it, go do their task, and then come back. There will be a link in the email that they'll click on. They'll click the button indicating that they've completed the task. That then again feeds back here, indicates the manual task is complete, and then we'll progress automatically to the next step. Once all of our tasks are completed here for a particular stage, then the release package itself will automatically move on to the next step. So there's that notion of a parent-child relationship where once all of the children's tasks are complete, the parent then moves on and then automated email notifications can be sent out to alert the users that that stage, the, the uh, deployment is complete. 
what happens as far as from a life cycle perspective then, once we've completed that deployment into the first area, going into the following environments can then be controlled by the people that are responsible for those testing areas. You don't necessarily just, depending upon what your deployment methodology is that you're using, a lot of times what you'll do is you'll get the information ready for deployment and then the people responsible for those areas will actually do the execution. Instead of them having to understand how to do the deployment themselves, they would click the button in order to execute the deployment within release control. The files would be deployed and then they could go off and do their testing. So from here, we're just going to go ahead and take a bit of a shortcut. We're just going to define a couple of tasks here for the UAT environment. I'm going to then approve our release package, and we'll go on and uh, talk about a couple of different areas. All right, so our package has moved on to the stage for ready for deployment. I'm going to go ahead and click the deploy button. This would be me as that UAT environment owner, indicating that I'm ready to pull that release into my environment, and you'll notice that the first task that we have associated from a dimension standpoint is updated and now indicates that it's in progress. Again, once it's complete, that response will be sent back to the system and the status will be updated. As things are actively running in the system, we will be able to drill in and take a look at the activity listing here to understand what's actively running and obviously be able to drill into the details from here. Now, if you think back to the first slide that I started out with, I indicated that there was going to be not only the visibility and repeatability, which we've talked about up until this point, but that there would be auditability. So let's take a look at some of the auditability of the system so far. First of all, we have an activity log. So as things are moving through the system, we're getting feedback. Uh, my approval comments are captured here, and all of the information that is added to the system is then chrono chronologically added here. This is more from a, a note capture perspective. From an actual workflow history perspective now, everything that occurs on this release package, whenever I change values of the fields, whenever the status is updated, the change history is updated. And I will be able to get a detailed view of everything that has changed in that particular step. So I can see the old and the new value and the date, time, and user stamp of who made that change. So this is going to be captured, this detailed change history is going to be captured on every release package and every release train, even every deployment task that you go ahead and deploy through your system. So I happen to have another record here that um, we'll, we will go take a look at that happens to be a completed release package. So this release package here, you'll see there are several, uh, it went through the entire life cycle and it is out in production. So if we take a look at the production deployment steps, we had three steps that were completed. And let's go ahead and take a look at, let's start with the mainframe step here, at the last step that was completed. So it deployed a change man package. Communication went out to change man saying go and deploy this package. And as a result of all this information being stored for the deployment task, we have that detailed change history. As things are deployed and we get that response back from ChangeMan, we're doing updates to the system until we get that success or fail response from ChangeMan. Now, if it, if it had failed, then we would certainly get that response and this deployment task would move into a failed state. In this case, it was successful, so it's, uh, it had moved on to the complete status. We have a detailed message log, as we had seen up there in the release package. And then we also have the change man info. So this information is not being stored in SBM. This is basically just going and doing a read over on the change man side in order to, again, give whoever has access to the release control information data about what has gone on with this deployment task that was part of that overall release package. So again, that 360 degree visibility that we're providing to the users. And you'll see that there's a listing of information that we're pulling, again, directly from ChangeMan that's related to that package that we deployed. 
Now this is taking a look at the change man deployment. We also have, let's go back to our production listing here. We also have a couple of other tasks that we created as a re result of that release package. And this one here was an automation step. So one thing we haven't talked about yet, which we're going to move into now, is talking about the release automation. So from our source code repositories, whether it be Dimensions, PVCS, or even a tool outside of Serena, such as Subversion or TFS, what we can do is we can take those artifacts, and maybe it's right from the source code repository. Perhaps it's from a continuous integration tool, depending upon your, your environment. And we can take those into a release automation application that will actually deploy those artifacts into the endpoints, whether it's a testing environment or a production environment. Again, the idea is that we're going to repeat that deployment process several times prior to going out to production. And if it's the same process each time, that should reduce the number of errors that we end up with in production. So this particular task here was a result of we had deployed a baseline from dimensions. We picked up that baseline then with our release automation tool and then deployed it to the endpoint servers, doing some additional tasks at the end. So there might have been some um, DLL files we had to register, maybe some services we had to stop and start, depending upon the application. There could be a myriad of activities that are necessary at that endpoint. So let's dig a little bit deeper into that release automation application. This is the interface here for Serena release automation. And you'll see from this view here, we have an overview of all of the different environments that we can deploy to. This is going to be, of course, defined by you. And there will be one or more resources associated with it with each environment, depending upon the number of servers that you have for each environment. Just like release control, we have high, a high degree of auditability here for everything that's going on. This screen is kind of the overall dashboard view, if you will, because it gives us uh, visibility into all of the environments, as well as on the right-hand side, we can see that the last deployment that was made out to those environments, the green indicates that it was successful. If it had failed, we would see that the environment is not compliant and it would not be green. We can also get an instant view as to what version of the application we have deployed out into that environment. So now you have an idea of, well, what's in an UAT and what's an integration test? What are the different versions that are sitting in those two different environments? Right here, we get that in, in a single view. Also, as we drill in to take a look at the last deployment, for instance, that went into the development environment, let's drill in one more here. We'll see that two components were deployed out to this particular development environment. Now, depending upon how many components you have, that is all configurable. Each component essentially has its own process. And then we define kind of an overarching process that says, this is the order of those different components. So this particular application called Clarius has an app component and a web component. If I open up the web component here and drill into the details, I'm going to see each of the steps that I defined for that particular deployment process. You'll see that we deleted the files and directories to make sure that we didn't try to deploy something that was old. We then downloaded the artifacts from our our safe repository that we uploaded them from after they were deployed from Dimensions. We went and deleted the files that were no longer necessary out on the destination server, and then we copied the files that we needed to out to that destination server. Each one of these steps includes a detailed audit trail of everything that occurred during that step. So if you think about a step failing, we're able to drill in very easily and see what failed in that step. Now, you may be thinking, well, I can kind of do that today. I've got a bunch of scripts that are doing that automation for me, and that's where the next big capability of this release automation comes in. It's not a matter of writing scripts and then just executing those scripts. From our perspective, we wanted to make that one step easier and allow you to graphically build out those workflow steps necessary to deploy your applications so that it reduces even more human error in your release process. So what we'll see on the screen next here is a graphical representation of that workflow that we just saw the audit trail for. And when we build this workflow, we're just going to drag and drop the plugin steps from the left-hand menu over here. 
And then the properties that are available for us to populate are provided to us. We enter in our information, and now that is stored as a step. Now steps can happen in parallel, of course. They can happen in sequence. We can also have a, a backup or a rollback process identified, too, if something happens to fail during the, the deployment of the application. Another thing that you'll want to likely define is envi environment variables. Inevitably, the server names are going to be different between a UAT and a production environment. So there's certainly the capability to define those environment variables, but then allow us to keep that configuration information the same, populate the environment variables at runtime, and again, repeat that same process over and over as many times as it takes in order to deploy those artifacts up until the time that we're ready to deploy into production. As you might expect, there is some reporting available over in the release automation interface as well. That gives us some idea of how long deployments are taking, uh, get, get us an understanding of the velocity of our releases, and provide us some insight into are there steps that are taking a little bit extra long and that we need to then uh, go and address those steps. Maybe there is uh, maybe there's something that's uh, trying to uh, uh, some sort of transaction that is occurring that we need to go and troubleshoot in order to make that release faster. So it gives us visibility in order to keep improving our process, making it faster, and getting our releases so that they're repeatable and audit auditable and more efficient. So with that, I'll return to our uh, release management dashboard here. We've given you an overview of our Serena release management solution today. And uh, hopefully you've been able to walk out with some ideas of how the application will allow you to have more visibility, more repeatability, and more auditability in your release management process. So with that, I will end the demonstration.